Uh, next up is the concept for the renewal of the diversity of the action plan, uh, diversity action plan rather. And uh, Lucia Hindorf, a remote participant, is going to give the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Rich. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Council, for this opportunity to present the Diversity Action Plan or DAP concept reissue on behalf of the NHGRI extramural training team. So before I get into the details of the reissue, I wanted to take a step back and put the diversity action plan into some context. The DAP is the training program's longest running um, program. Uh, it was initially established in 2002 as the minority action plan. The purpose was to increase the number of URM or underrepresented minority scientists in genomic research through research training and mentoring. So this was established by the large genomic programs being mandated to include uh, training activities, mainly providing research experiences for individuals. As the DAP program continued, um, it uh, in 2014, they uh, we established a change so that large programs were no longer mandated to participate in the DAP as a condition of their funding. Also, the um, opportunity to apply from other institutions was made available. It became an open competition for everyone to apply. And so now in 2023, we're preparing to reissue the DAP uh, concept and uh, funding opportunity announcement. And in that context, there have been a, a few recent highlights that I want to describe to you. The first being the NIH Notice of Interest and Diversity being, being renewed in 2019, which basically reiterates NIH's commitment to encouraging institutions to diversify the students and mentors that are being trained to do research. Uh, this is also underscored by the NHGRI Diversity Action Agenda that you heard Van Spanum speak about earlier this morning, um, released in 2021, underscoring NHGRI's commitment in this area of enhancing and increasing workforce diversity. And then in the past two or three years in particular, there have been quite a number of new NHGRI-led as well as NIH-wide funding opportunity announcements for trainees from diverse backgrounds. We think this is a really good thing. Um, and obviously the, the um, interests of the NIH in general has done a lot to encourage the diversification of the workforce. So that being said, we want to make sure that as we think about renewing the DAP, we put this pro program in context with the rest of our training portfolio. And that's what I'm showing here. It's not my intention to go through each um, row in this matrix, but suffice to say that the columns here are each different career stages, ranging from high school on the left to mid or late stage investigators on the right. And you can see the place that the diversity action plan, plan occupies by the red rectangle here. So as you can see, the current our most recent uh, FOA supports trainees at the undergraduate, post bac and pre-doc levels. Um, before I zoom in, I want to note that um, on the right side of the career stage at the pre-doc levels on the, um, the kind of pinkish bars, what you see here are also opportunities for pre-docs to be supported um, through fellowships, as well as institutional research training grants, which are the largest chunk of our training portfolio among all the programs. So now zooming in a little bit closer at the undergraduate and post stage, what you can see is the DAP is um, the main program for institutions at the post level. And at the undergraduate level, it does occupy a distinct niche. So in addition to uh, diversity supplements, which are in to individual awards for one-time needs, we also have undergraduate programs that are related to minority serving institutions or idea eligible institutions partnering with research intensive institutions to provide research experiences for undergrads. That's the great program. We have a program um, that supports the outreach and education related to cloud computing and data science. That's the educational hub and a concept that council heard last round about uh, providing curriculum to uh, trainees at the entry level um, through entry level modules. And so the DAP occupies a distinct niche among the undergraduate and post bac phases of the training portfolio. So moving to the proposed changes for this concept, we are proposing a primary focus on undergraduates and post baccalaureates. So the previous FOA 
allowed for semester or summer experiences for undergraduates, post-baccalaureate trainees, and graduate students who are transitioning to an F31, that's a pre-doctoral fellowship, to complete the dissertation. However, there was never an intention for the DAP to become a replacement for the T32, which is the primary institutional way that graduate students are supported. And so for this um, new concept, we are proposing um, that the uh, the focus be on some summer and semester experiences for undergraduates and then post-baccalaureate trainees. In addition, we plan to add additional language related to evidence-based evaluation approaches and metrics. The, oops, excuse me. The previous FOA did include language about evaluation, but since then there has been a lot of additional evidence related to um, evaluating programs for diverse individuals. We also want to add some stronger language about diversity and mentors, and then add language to encourage broad approaches to recruiting, including uh, targeting minority serving institutions and community colleges, which are less well represented in our training portfolio. So before I open it up for questions, I want to acknowledge the DAP program leadership past and present, particularly Betty Graham. And I also want to acknowledge my colleagues, um, Tina Gatlin and Amber Jackson for their um, assessment of the program, and then the training team in general for their support and feedback throughout this whole process. So um, thank you. And I think we had identified a couple of discussants to kick off the discussion, um, Dr. Brothers and Dr. Jarvik, although we welcome comments from all council members. Thank you. Go ahead, Gail. Um, thank you. That was really informative, Lucia. Um, I, first of all, am very, very supportive of any measures to increase the pipeline of diverse students coming to us. You know, the pipeline gets shorter, you know, narrower and narrower as we go along. So I think that focusing this on undergraduates and leaving the graduate support to other existing programs makes just so much sense. And I also just wanted to um, applaud the increased focus for this round on evidence-based measurement of outcomes. So I didn't really have a question, just I really think that this round has strengthened the, um, the focus of the program in a very important way. Thanks. Thank you, Gail. Uh, Kyle? Yeah, I'm uh, really supportive as well, Lucia. I did just have a quick question. Could you say just a little bit more about diversity in mentors? Um, that, um, you know, there seems like there's a number of ways to come at that uh, topic. So just wondering what you're, what you're thinking about there. Yeah, so we do have a number of approaches that we could use, and I would be interested to um, see you know which of which of these um or if you have additional ideas so we could you know that i think the standard is to sort of include language uh, emphasizing how important it is for individuals to have access to a, a diverse perspectives um and diverse experiences from their mentors that would be simple you know that we had a discussion earlier about uh, potentially encouraging mentors as well um as kind of part of the structure of the program. I think we'd have to look at that, but it's something we're interested in doing overall in the training portfolio. And so that might be an opportunity to build something like that in the DAP, um, to the DAP FOA. Um, and then of course we we do encourage the, you know, we, we do have a number of um, DAP programs that have been funded throughout the years. And so we're always encouraging them to not only um, expand their faculty mentors, but to really think critically about the interactions between you know, seminar speakers, for example, or research mentors and the, the participants. And so I think it, it can be a continuum all the way from how these individuals, these trainees are recruited through how they experience the program to the networks that they develop. So I, you know, I think there are a number of approaches that we could take. And you know, if, if you have additional ideas, we'd, we'd be glad to hear them. Yeah, well, I think there's... Um... You know, a lot of the creativity needs to come from the applicants, obviously. So it's just a matter of making the uh, the call uh, open ended enough that folks can, you know, can use creative solutions like, you know, maybe there's not uh, a lot of mentors who have experience uh, being underrepresented uh, in, during their own careers uh, in genomics. So, but there may be 
sort of colleagues who have that experience who are not in genomics who could, could collaborate, you know, there's there's a number of different ways of, of approaching it. You know, it seems that at minimum you would want um, the programs to involve some kind of training, as you were saying, for mentors to sort of like just prepare them to, to be good mentors in this context. But it, um, yeah, in any case, I think that the key issue is just making sure that there's um, room in the um, um, in the program for projects to be creative and to address that issue. Uh, I think it's a really important one. Thanks, point noted. Other questions or comments from council? Okay, can I get a motion to approve the concept? Second, all in favor? Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? Lisa, I see your hand. 